see if I can switch to these. Yeah, Ooh, speaking nice. of ad advent calendars for games, I think Brosentia is doing a advent calendar thing. Oh, here we go. We've got some racers here. So we've got Soapy Gnome versus Thor of Kenya. That's the first of our two races. Oh, Thor of Kenya, this is the first time for a mystery tournament. Completed two big 20s. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Those big 20s are pretty difficult. Um, and we've got Soapy Gnome here, who this is a uh, second mystery tournament. Joined the previous mystery tournament, finished 88th, which is actually, that's not that bad. I mean, um, you you have uh, a quarter of racers will will have a two loss, uh, 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 two losses. So that means you're already participating in the top 75% of mystery tournament. So uh, very well done. I am bad at video games. Well, hopefully today, Soapy Gnome will show us that they are, in fact, uh, pretty good at video games. Because uh, I'm excited have, for a good race. We have our second group here. Um, I just oh, realized no, Thor wrong. Kenya's picture is, uh, is Dora the Explorer with a different face. Uh, and here we've got um, Omega Number well, the... and Ryukois. <laughs> for some reason, those aren't our... Oh, but we're starting. Okay, so let me... The oh, the avatar. I recognize the avatar. I can figure this out by avatars. Uh, who has the chess avatar? I saw that just a little while ago. No, that is Omega number. Um, uh, oh, and shoot. Well, up. I don't. The game oh, well. is you have 10 seconds too. So, uh, in all these levels, you have a 10 second time limit, and there are a lot of little things that happen. Um, but in general, you know, this, this first world doesn't have a whole lot of mechanics to it. Um, there's some conveyor belts here. You have to jump to go faster when you're up against a ceiling. Um, but all you need to do is move your little guy to the door. That's your goal in all these levels. And there's 12 different worlds. Yeah, this is a this is a lot of flashing here. Yeah, this is this is an interesting game, though, because um, a lot of the games that we race in this mystery tournament, they tend to have a gimmick to it. Like, you have to wrap your head around something unusual. Uh, but this game seems, to, right now, it's a lot of very commonplace uh, video game elements. Um, you know, jumping on conveyor belts, that's a pretty basic element of going fast in a game. Uh, so I know we talk about sometimes that, oh, how can you how can you be good at games if we're giving them to you, you never played them before? Well, you've got a lot of these common elements that you can get good at it, that you recognize, if I'm on a conveyor belt, I want to jump. I, I want to go faster Yeah. Uh, by not being on it. Well, and some of these elements, uh, because the time limit is so tight, you, you have to do it. Um, let me uh, get the pace pin in here. But yeah, in general, this game is going to be a lot of execution and not a whole lot of puzzling. So something happened to Soapy Gnome. They are back in World 1. I think they might have accidentally re-entered. Oh. Um, and I think the pace bin mentioned that the only way to exit a world if you accidentally redo it is to quit the whole game and restart, which is unfortunate. So this is, this is going to be hurting Soapy pretty bad right out of the gate here. It's true. It um, does having... say that. And, and the later worlds are going to be where it's going to be reasonable not to finish the levels on the first try, but it's, uh, that's a really unfortunate mistake. Yeah. You want to get each of these little bits of, uh, of time and not making these mistakes is uh, going to cost you. Uh, meanwhile, our other three racers, they all appear to be on the second world where we've just got this giant field of orange juice. Um, and we're done with the second world. Now they're entering the third world. So it looks here like Jackie the Jack is just a little bit ahead of Bees the One. Uh, Bees the One wrapping up World 2, but these levels are so short that it's still a couple of levels difference. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, really fast-paced. Right there, uh, the level Soapy was on, if you don't jump constantly, you get you get the conveyor belt pushes you back too fast. Um level three world three introduces warps but i mean again 
if you've played in an MT before, you've seen games with warps. Pretty standard game mechanic. Uh, nothing too crazy at this point. We've got some buttons. You touch the button and it opens something up. Um, this is a this is another thing that uh, that is a kind of a big difference in games. Uh, whether the buttons or the switches or the keys tell you what they do, so there may be a little bit of hesitation for the players here. Uh, like we saw uh, on Soapy, hit this button and wasn't sure where this uh, door and this uh, open panel was going to appear. Uh, so that caused a little bit of hesitation, and with that hesitation, there is a little bit of getting lost. Well, let's see if I can get some sound here. Yeah, what so you can constantly going? hear the clock ticking, which is uh, a whole lot of fun. Yeah, now it looks like we've got water going on here. I'm not sure what the water mechanic is doing. Oh, you they have, can swim uh, in the water. You have infinite jumps in the water, basically. The, the the actual water gravity doesn't change a whole lot like you would expect it to. Um, but you can jump as often as you want to. What would you think is the mix between games where water is a hazard, whereas water is a benefit? Because this one, it seems like water is just a benefit. But, you know, like, you play a game like Sonic the Hedgehog, and, oh, man, water is just going to kill you. Uh, it's it, it feels almost like 50-50 that it's half of the games where water is, an, a, a, you know, a problem, and half of the games where water is pretty cool. It gives you some, you know, more mobility. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people complain about water levels. I think it's just because they tend to be slower than, like, normal platforming levels. But in a lot of games, water levels can be cool. I think some of it, too, is uh, the Water Temple and the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I think that's yeah, kind that's of uh, like the meme -y. Everybody thinks of that, and they, they don't like water levels. Yeah, there was one... Uh, Snowdoes are mentioning there's a level involving water that walled one of the players. There was a level involving water that walled me when I tested this game. It's probably the same level. You have to, like, jump through spikes that are both on the ceiling and the ground. So you have to have really good timing and... Uh, it's difficult. Subnautica is probably not a water level. <laughs> so we see our, our players are are pretty close together here. Um, we see Jackie the Jack on 5-7. Um, their opponent, Bees the One, is at the beginning of 5 uh, on 5-3. So that's not that big a difference. I mean, if we're talking 10 seconds per level, that's only a 50 second uh, difference. And uh, uh, just a tough level that walls one of the players. They make a few mistakes. That could close that difference pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, um, and for this goal, actually, so that they'll finish the game, and there's 10 worlds, but then there's two bonus worlds. Um, if I remember right, there's either one or two. I think there's two bonus worlds. The pace um, spin suggests two. Okay, yeah. And uh, that... This game would be too short without those. I, I finished the first 10 worlds pretty quick, and then those last worlds really sort of uh, really make you work for it. So that's another... I think that's another big thing that makes this race uh, kind of different than other races. We do a lot of races where we tend to play a very small portion of the game. Uh, you know, we'll play the first two worlds out of eight, or we'll play, you know, the first 20 levels out of 100 or something like that. Uh, but we're playing a full game here, and uh, assuming this game is is kind of typical, we're going to see a, a, a like a, a smooth difficulty curve here. So even though we see our players here have some separation, we see you know everybody is uh, on different worlds than their uh, opponent. Um, a really difficult level towards the end could change the momentum here, especially if one of the players is cruising through the easy levels. Uh, but maybe they struggle a little bit with the more difficult levels at the end, uh, but their opponent maybe takes it a little bit safer and they manage to clear some levels on the first try, especially in those difficult levels at the end. Um, so we're definitely, this is not a decisive race at this point. We've still got plenty of race left here um, and we could see some, uh, some upsets. Yeah, uh, you can see Bees the One and Jackie the Jack and Thor of Kenya, all on World 6, which introduces mini, mini laser. So you just go in that orange laser and you turn small. Physics don't really change, but you're smaller. I mean, like, your jump is relatively smaller compared to how big you were. 
But I don't. It doesn't make a huge difference to the game. And I think it, here is the level that Snowdozer was talking about. We see uh, yep. all. We we now have three players on level six five here, um, <laughs> and this water section is really brutal. The physics here. We're seeing just death after death. Um, so this might be the opportunity for a lead change here on our match here of Bees the One versus Jackie the Jack. Uh, and this could be an opportunity for Soapy Gnome to catch up to Thora Kenya. Yeah, redoing that world has, has definitely affected him, especially, you know, we're world six at the nine minute mark. This is a really fast game. Yeah, this level took me forever. I mean, you just kind of have to get it. At first, I was almost like... Is this a bad game? Like, is this not gonna be viable? Because <laughs> this, I just like couldn't get this jump, but I got it eventually. And then the game asks you to do similar stuff later, and I was able to do it much quicker. So I think you just kind of have to get used to the way the game controls. Soapy yeah, is moving along here. Ten seconds, one, but. Soapy's moving along here, entering world six. All our other players are still here on world. Uh... On World 6-5, this is a pretty tough level. If somebody can figure out the trick to this, then that is going to be a, a big deal. That's going to be a lead change. Yeah, this is kind of insane. I can't... Uh... We talk about levels being equalizers a lot, but normally you can't see it as evidently as you can right now. It's not just like so obvious that the game is incredibly fast and then everyone is on this level. Um, yeah, l luckily this isn't something, you know, silly like, oh, they didn't read about a mechanic in the pace band or anything like that. They just got to execute. Um, sometimes that's how it is. So Jackie, I think, managed to get halfway across before succumbing to the spikes. Now I saw one of the players. I think it might have been uh, it might have been Bees the one sort of sitting on the right side where it's safe and practicing. Oh, we saw Jackie doing it too, sort of practicing and trying to to steady themselves. Because um, it's it's also a little bit obnoxious that they've got to do this little top section every time they die, and that wastes a little bit of time for getting yeah. to practice the bottom section. What I found, um, I noticed Jackie is bouncing very. Quickly, what I found is that you want to do fewer jumps rather than like constant little taps. Um, I kind of came in from the top and I think I did a one, two, three and made it to the door. Um, that was what was easier for me, but you can probably make it work either way. Ooh, Thor Kenya got pretty close in that last attempt. Yeah, Thor but it's not like. To... Thor needs to get this cleared because this is given a uh, given Soapy Gnome an opportunity to catch up. Yeah, we're all here. Uh, everyone is here, as Sakurai says. The, the uh, it's not like at this point. Oh, now all the levels are like that. This is a particularly difficult level. Um, <laughs> the wall yeah. is real. I didn't. I didn't think it might would be this real. This is like the realest wall I've maybe ever seen. And the fact that we have a double, we get to see it four times, is exciting. Yeah, this is a, another thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, not only is there like a skill level in mystery tournament, there is a psychological portion to this too. Um, Soapy accidentally repeated the first world, and not only is that a little bit of a, a hit for time, although obviously if you're going to repeat a world, you want to repeat the, the fastest and easiest one. Oh, we got a clear. Jackie got a clear. Both of them did on the bottom. So. Oh man, this is yeah, this is close. Really close. Um, and I think that this is actually, we're looking like pretty good performances from, I mean, this is a fairly simple game, but um, I think all these players, you know, they don't seem ill-suited to precision platformers. I'll say that. Uh, but as I was saying, there's there's a psychological uh, element to it, too, that Soapy lost that time. But also there's a whole, oh, no, I screwed this up. And, you know, is that going to be weighing on Soapy uh, yeah. as they move on through the race? And we see Thor has made it through. Thor has navigated the water tunnel. So despite everybody so being... Oh, nice. Wow. So much so closer was... than he was. I mean, made up time for sure. 
Yeah, made up a lot of time there. Um, everybody is still basically in the same order that uh, that they entered that level in, but I think everybody's a lot closer now. Oh, these are some, some tight jumps here, but Soapy manages to make it through. Yeah, this level that Thor and Soapy on is kind of weird. This It has a light puzzle element. You have to not shrink until after you get the key. So they all have like a little bit of, you have to think about the order you do things in, but um, most of the time it's not very relevant. I mean, it is, but you, you're you just sort of instantly seeing it. We have uh, room wrapping, classic VVV style. Yeah, I was just thinking the purple background really does make me think of VVV, VVV. Yeah, Hectate points out too that for us this is you know this is a big big deal that oh man uh, Soapy has done so good Soapy has has caught up some time, uh, but Soapy has no idea. Every one of these players knows I got stuck on that level way longer than any level before it, yeah. and that could have shaken everything up. So this you know this could cause you to start to behave in a in unusual ways like maybe you. We're playing it safe before, thinking, oh man, I'm doing doing pretty good. I, I don't need to rush it. Um, oh, we have a lead change. Soapy has pulled ahead of Thora Kenya. Wow. Just barely, but I mean, compared to a whole world behind, that's something. So this is this is really exciting here. The the uh, the 10 second timer and hearing the timer countdown also, I think. And I think it actually is faster, so it's okay for these players, but people are more likely, I think, to rush forward and die and then retry the level than they are to sit and look at the level to see what they should be doing. Um, which, you come back so fast in this game, that's probably the right move anyway, but I think that definitely affects the way that they play the game. Yeah, at, um, at no time are you really losing more than a maximum of 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay, here's a mechanic that I absolutely hate. Invisible blocks that only appear when you get close to them. Yeah, it's horrible. L luckily, it's pretty much just go where you would expect to, and it works out. There's nothing that's like a gotcha, but it is... I wish it wasn't in the game. If we do a custom level pack, don't use this mechanic. So we see... Uh... Thor Kenya is right on Soapy's heels here, but Soapy getting through the maze pretty quick. Oh, what happened to to bees? I thought bees already cleared one one uh, five, uh, eight one. Uh, yeah, we see a little bit of a, a gap here opening up between bees and Jackie the Jack. Oh yeah. We've passed the 15 minute mark of no return. Game is long enough, which we expected it would be, but probably some super gamers might be able to finish this game in under 15. Oh, I kind of liked uh, what Soapy did on 8.5 there. There was, a, there was a step near the bottom, but Soapy realized that you didn't need to actually step on that bottom step. You could just jump to the second step directly. A little bit of a time save, but that's that's showing some good uh, knowledge of the mechanics. They're recognizing that uh, Soapy had enough of a jump to get to that second step. Absolutely. This level is really tight on the timer. Uh, Soapy's died to the timer a couple times. Uh, and Bees is on it now. 2-1. Ooh, okay. That's probably about as th the last frame that you get into the door. So it's exciting. Yeah, so far in the race, this seems to be the first time when the that 10 second time limit uh, really seems to have come into play. It felt like a lot of these levels that uh, they're they're kind of generous. You got a second or two, and there's just there's so little to them that you're kind of pretty close to optimal. Not like a Super Meat Boy level where you know you run around the whole level and then eventually you figure out that oh you just jump through the saw blades in the middle and you get to the exit, you know, and shave six minutes off your time or something. Yeah. Well, and that's part of the reason, another reason why I don't like these uh, invisible block levels, because they kind of just make you run back and forth rather than have good platforming. Uh, Jackie the Jack is 
the far furthest ahead on world nine which introduces glue which is where you you have to jump out of glue you can't move on the ground so it looks like thor has managed to pull back ahead of uh of soapy gnome Ooh, these levels are starting to combine things now we've got uh we've got the shrinkers and we've got the invisible blocks in the same level here yeah, and Jackie the Jack has the shrinkers, has ice, has the glue. Um, and then I, I believe in the two bonus worlds, there aren't any new mechanics uh, introduced. It's just sort of about combining things and making challenging levels. I don't think I'm really that fond of uh, the glue as a mechanic. It doesn't bring a lot to the table right now, for sure. Um, it, it does make you just sort of play a little differently. I think it's in the mind of a developer. They might think, well, the whole thing is about going fast. So if I use glue, that'd be an obstacle to going fast. But I don't, I don't know if it's implemented the best way possible. I mean, it, from a functional standpoint, it's really not a lot different than the first world where it was jump on the conveyor belt to go faster. Yeah. It also gets me thinking about how many different mechanics we have in games, which are just variations of, I'm going to make the controls worse for you for a little while. Absolutely. <laughs> like, re I don't think I've e reverse controls is ever any good. It's kind of okay in Earthbound. I felt like I didn't hate it then, but also it's annoying. Yeah, I mean, reverse controls, like, as a punishment for doing something dumb, that's something, but... Yeah, that's reverse controls are dumb. Um, the whole let's let's flip the screen upside down is dumb. Um, ice physics is is like uh, one of the worst offenders. I feel like that it's just we're going to make you slip around, and it's it's more annoying than it's thoughtful. Yeah. And then we have things, how does, wait, we have glue and a conveyor belt. So we have an immovable object of, uh, and an irresistible force combined as a single gameplay element. Oh no, I'm surprised the game doesn't just crash there and then. And now B's the one is on a level that has combined glue and invisible blocks, which kind of defeats the point of the second one of those. Definitely, this is... so you notice that they're going... Uh, they were on the first row and then they went up to the top row and have to go all the way to the left. The two final levels are off to the right. Um, yeah, glue so maybe... does something interesting on 10-1 here. You do have to land to the left or else you just keep jumping up and not under the ceiling. So, I mean, there's that's something different than like a conveyor belt. But it's just more of just kind of an annoying jump. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Jackie and Thor of Kenya are on stage 10-5, and it's just this stupid water and spikes again. It's it's called I'm Sorry. The developer was not sorry. That's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a lie. That is if, a lie. If they were sorry, it wouldn't be here. Uh, the developer is sorry that they could come up with more game design ideas. There we go. Thor of Kenya getting through. That was fast. Nicely done. We're just gonna have to redo this level. But anyway, yeah, these are this is the final normal world, and then they've got to kind of go over to the right from where the other worlds are and do the do the last two. Jackie clearing stage ten six pretty by a pretty tight margin there. Yeah, this I'm sorry is a difficult uh, difficult level. Our two right players got it no problem. But I feel like also there is an advantage that, um, what, the first one was World 5. We've we've gone through five worlds now. Um, I feel like the players might have a little bit better feel for the for the jumping when you're tiny. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, it really has not been that long since they did this in World 5, so they may still have some of that muscle memory working in their favor. Yeah, and it's a really similar, it almost looks like a tighter gap honestly, but um, it's hard to say. So we have a situation happening here that periodically happens in Mystery Tournament Race doubles. Um, I don't know that we have a good name for it, but it's where 
two players are having a really competitive race with each other and the two other players are having a really competitive race with each other, but neither of those pairs are actually opponents. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there we go. World X, Jackie the Jack in the second to last. I guess it's the final world that's over to the right. World X is still up. As 10. Uh, and I think this is just trying to combine all the mechanics in one. Man, this time is really tight here. Jackie the Jack was playing well. And you can all... The one thing about this game, which I don't know if it's... It's kind of a cool mechanic because it makes you feel like you're cheating the system in some way. But also it's just sort of an annoyance is that in that opening animation you have control. Um, while the level is like seemingly loading. And you like a little wipe transition and you sometimes need it in these tighter levels Ooh, that's a that is a big mechanic yeah if you don't realize that there was um what was it there was a game i played one time and it it had that similar thing to it um where you had control during the transition and there was a, a funny gimmick that there was one level that you needed the time that the level was loading before the timer started so if you didn't clear the level on the first attempt, it would uh, it, the level would be impossible because it would load instantly because you'd already loaded it. So you'd have <laughs> to clear your cache for the flash game, re-download it so that you could get that uh, that loading <laughs> few seconds to beat the level. Now that's quality game design. The, that uh, is quality game design. It reminds me of like in modern like Super Mario Kaizo levels where. Mario automatically does kind of a victory walk after he finishes the level, but he still is Mario. So if you don't set up like a blockade and you fall into a pit, you'll still die after you finish the level when you don't have control. So it's just, it's just little things like that. It's like meta elements to the gaming. Although that's that's done deliberately, and I'm pretty yeah. sure this is just the developer just slapped this game together and <laughs> put it on. And there we've got Thor of Kenya has cleared worlds 1 through 11. Uh, just needs to watch the credits, which uh, the I think the pace spin informs us takes about 25 seconds. So we don't see players uh, sweating beads wondering, when am I going to get to play again? When am I going to get to go? That's a nice thing to put in the pace spin, actually. Not necessary, but, you know, just like kind of a psychological. And here's Jackie the Jack. We have the credits almost going from one screen onto the other. Um, and... And on the on the left side here, um, we have Soapy Gnome and Bees the One both managed to clear that I'm sorry level pretty close together. Uh, not a big space between the two of them. And here it is, Thor of Kenya is on extra two, which is the final world in this goal. Yep, we've got a BBB gravity transitions. Oh my god, is that the new mechanic for this world? Yeah. When you pass through those, uh, the orange ones send you up, the blue ones send you down. Um, and they flip gravity. Gravity already would randomly flip. So honestly, this mechanic was already there, it's just... Now it can happen quicker. And this not a whole lot of levels is left. Really tight. No, not a lot of levels left. I think it's going to be pretty hard for either of our left players to catch up at this point. Yeah, whole world behind. And there's just a few levels here. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll get I'm sorry, number three. <laughs> yeah, there's always a chance. There's also, it's... It feels really, I, somebody mentioned it before in, I want to say in the uh, Discord, that a lot of old games have a habit of the levels being in the wrong order. Um, some of these late levels are like really easy compared to what they dealt with earlier. You know, like this this yeah. level here, um, extra 10, 8, uh, extra 8 was pretty easy. I think this sort of early, there's uh, Duck Dunn for Thor of Kenya, that's a finish. So we have yep. a we have a finish in that race. I think uh, some of these early sort of Flash inspired games also like this clearly inspired by Flash games. Like it was just sort of quantity over. They just wanted a lot of levels. Like I have 120 levels. They just kind of threw them in where they could. 
Well, and a big part of it, I feel like, is the this is one of those games where the developer made those levels, and then as long as the levels didn't break, they never right. looked back. And we have a dot done from Jackie the Jack. Yep, so unfortunately that means that we, we know who our winners in today's race are. Uh, but it was still, our players did pretty good, especially the, some of those were pretty tough levels. The um, oh, Jackie is just bouncing around, showing off the whole world. <laughs> Not even going to the customization screen. A uh, little bit disappointed by that. I feel like that would almost be worthy of docking some time. Uh, but... <laughs> Gotta put Nico in charge of this tournament. Oh no, God no. Might not be fair, but it would be exciting. <laughs> so very we did well have a done. Color a dinosaur tournament, so if that can happen, anything anything can. can happen. Well, but it's it's that rule of just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> oh, here's Thor is doing the customization. This is a unique way to do it, actually, honestly. I don't think I've ever seen a game do it quite this way. But also look at this. Like, for some reason, there's a shrink thing down at the bottom. Like, you want to get to the ones at the bottom? You got to shrink first. I honestly the... think it's because they didn't have the room on screen with their size of pixels to have two rows of that. <laughs> and so they, they made the bottom one smaller. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a, I can't think of any other reason. I was oh, you wondering. had to unlock the shrink rays. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, that's a good point. So it's it's an unlockable. So this game is is a Metroidvania. You unlock all these cool abilities. <laughs> yeah, like blue. Blue, yes. <laughs> blue is my favorite ability. And level uh, X10 here, uh, X not to be confused with 10, that this is a completely different world than world 10, calls itself the true finale and unlocks the level editor. Oh, you've got to you've got to beat 11 worlds to unlock the level editor. That's going to make the custom world uh, um, tournament be even more interesting. <laughs> uh, we've got, yes, yeah, so our times 27 and 28, those both beat my testing time. Which, uh, I don't go quite as, you know, stressed as I would maybe in a tournament, but I got 29.01. FAO beating, uh, me pretty significantly with 25.01. Yeah, it's always fascinating seeing, seeing these kinds of games, uh, especially with those, uh, those spike water levels in it. Uh, that's an opportunity for there to be huge differences. Somebody who manages to clear that in, you know, a handful of attempts is going to have a wildly different time than somebody else. Um, it, it's kind of fascinating how that happens, that you will, you'll, you'll have some games um, where they are pretty steady, you know, that players tend to make steady progress. And then you have games like this where you just, you hit a, a dead end, a soapy... I think has accidentally entered the level editor and is trying yeah. to escape it. There we go. <laughs> I think you have to hit backspace, uh, which is weird. It's in the middle okay, there we go. Ah, so he has escaped. So we've still got an exciting race here between Soapy and uh, and Bees the One, as Soapy has just entered World Extra, uh, which is not World X, and is also not World Ten, which is Roman numeral X. <laughs> It's true, it is a little weird. Um, I know I went through, uh, just to make, because people had a lot of questions about backups, just to make them a little more interesting, I went and marked which MT they were originally in. Uh, well, MTs, really. But I always called MT10, MTX, because that's what everybody calls it, and it's tradition, and that's what it was. But to make World 11X, I don't know if I can agree with that decision. That's just confusing. We've got, this is still pretty close here. Uh, we've got extra five versus extra four here. Where they just put glue in all these levels because they couldn't think of a better mechanic to reuse. <laughs> yeah, they really go hard on the glue once they introduce the glue. I think maybe the dev thought it was the hardest thing, but it 
I don't I don't know if I'd say that. Or it could be just one of those things where the dev was like really proud that they figured out how to program it and they just wanted to put it in there. Ooh. I mean, I don't make games, but I, I can't imagine that was the hardest thing to do. <laughs> the set move to zero went on the glue. <laughs> Maybe. But they got stuck on the glue concept. I love it. I kind of like it that this final level here, extra number 10, um, is is pretty tight on the time. Yeah. Actually, but a lot of these time. later worlds are really pretty tight on the time. Um, I, it, like, surprisingly tight. I think these players are just, you know, they've been playing it long enough. They know what's up most of the time. This one's weird because if you land too far to the right... Yeah, you jump back up. So that's kind of the most unique thing that happens with the glue. I mean, they really had an opportunity here for like to combine the glue and the conveyor belts on the ceiling. So like you could stick yourself to the ceiling and kind of stick along. Mm. Yeah, like a really fast conveyor belt. There's no speed variation in the conveyor belts. They're all exactly the same. Bees is getting a little bit stuck on this level here. It's uh, this no this glue is a pretty a pretty annoying mechanic here, um, especially around this corner where you have to switch direction really quick because that few seconds you spend having to jump back up and back down that just that that wastes just that extra second that you really need to clear. Jackie commenting in the chat: the glue was incredibly annoying. Yeah, we, we kind of got that feeling from watching the players play it. Congratulations on getting through those two uh, those two water spike levels. It was... Uh, we could feel your pain the whole time. Yeah, it, it was a harrowing experience for everybody. Myself and testing. FBO didn't mention it. Maybe he didn't have trouble when he tested. <laughs> but I did. Well, it's on Steam. You can always leave a review. Make it's sure true. you leave a review and mention that you raced it in Mystery Tournament. It's true. This game is free. I think um, a lot of people go looking for free games on itch.io, which is a good thing. We find a lot of cool stuff there. But there are a lot of free games on Steam, and I think it is a little under-searched because the Steam doesn't make it very easy to search just free games and in genres or whatever. But if you take the time, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Yeah, Steam has, has really undergone a, a bit of an evolution lately that um, they're a lot better source for, for free and indie stuff um, than they were in the past. So it's nice having all these new avenues. And there is our clear by Bees the One. There is our final dot done. So players did, uh, players did pretty good here. What are our comments that people have? Um, that's another great thing about SRL. You get to do your dot duns. We got a, a cool platforming. What's quality of life? Comment. Players did. Thor of Kenya says double spikes are straight form Krampus. So we got a Krampus reference here. <laughs> that's that time of year. Spikes at top and bottom may rot for all I care. Uh, a lot of comments here. Stupid swimming levels. Yeah. Yep, water levels are definitely a unfair thing. We had uh, one of our racers who joined in, two racers who joined in for the fun of it, uh, given forfeits there. Interviews, by the way. Double spike zones suck. All right, yeah, everybody doing a good performance there. Uh, I think everybody managing to clear that within the, uh, within the allotted time for the mystery race. That's always a, a good shot. Um, yeah, I didn't see any players having any serious issues, so I think everybody did a good job other than just, you know, getting getting a little bit better at your basic platforming. That just That's one that comes up a lot here. Yeah. Um, platforming and Sokoban, those are the two things you have to learn in order to be good at Mystery <laughs> Tournament. Hopefully not. We're trying to get rid of the pure Sokoban games <laughs> because it's just too much. But at the same time, yes, you should you should know a little bit of block pushing, a little bit of block pushing knowledge on you. You should know the two by two puts you into a fail state. Got to restart if you ever get the two by two of pushable blocks. 
Congratulations to our winners of this race, uh, Jackie the Jack and uh, Thor of Kenya. We'll be moving on to the next round. Um, so each one of them has notched a victory under their belt. And of course, uh, those are, I think both of them, those are their first mystery tournament. So that's got to feel good, joining mystery tournament and scoring a victory right yeah. out of the gate. Um, yeah, congratulations. Half, and it's not over yet. Of, this is round one. Losers runs happen. Yep, half of player, half of the players who join Mystery Tournament will lose their first race, so you're already in the top 50%. Um, and yeah, we've got Soapy Gnome and Bees the One, both of them putting up uh, good performances there, uh, both clearing very close to each other. Um, so that was an excellent performance, and you never know. And of course, uh, another thing about Mystery Tournament is sometimes you draw a game that uh, that doesn't quite work with you. This was pretty pure action. Um, but a lot of the games that we will draw, of course, you sometimes you get puzzle games. Um, and a lot of times you're going to get games that are going to be a mix of things. You're going to get an action game that's got some puzzles in it. Um, you're going to get a puzzle game that's got, you know, maybe some strategy elements to it. Uh, so sometimes it's just you didn't quite get your game. Maybe you'll get a rhythm game or something like that, and you'll be surprised at how you can succeed, even though you might uh, struggle with one or two genres. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, and you never know. Yeah, I know my, my brother has joined the tournament for the first year. I know if he gets, like, an FPS game, he's going to be awesome, and we have some, but if he gets, uh, there's some genres he might get, and I don't, <laughs> you know, we'll have to see. That's a, our best players are, it's amazing how you can be good at everything, <laughs> and the best players somehow are. And then um, sometimes you get a genre that you can't even describe, like uh, resizing windows while fighting vampires genre. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that game. Or uh, last year we had a game <laughs> that somebody submitted where it's like you're a cube and you can fire as many balls out as you want, like so much that you can like fill up the level and like go up on them. And you were just like knocking stuff off. The game was called Hyperbole. I have no idea what I would describe that game as. <laughs> I guess hyperbolic. That sounds anyways, about right. That's all we got for you today. There's more matches coming up. Actually, I can probably... Is this broken? Yeah, this I was going to say, let's see what the next matches are, and we'll take a look at them. There we go, yeah. In uh, 15 hours, we've got... Or this might still be an hour off, I'm not sure. But in either 14 or 15 hours, we've got Italia versus Jew Horse, two new people. Uh, we've got Captain Drake versus Ten Miku. That's a winner's two. So that Ten Miku already had that. Uh, Captain Drake had a buy because... He was in an amazing uh, position last year. And so that's already the second match for Ten Miku. That's exciting. Taking on Captain Drake so quickly, that's that's a lot of confidence. Um, yeah. Captain Drake was the one who knocked me out my first loss in Mystery Tournament. I made it to quite a few rounds uh, before that happened. Yeah, it's always tough taking on Captain Drake. <laughs> He's very good at games. We've on the other hand, on the other hand, if you can face off against somebody like that and keep your nerve, that's a good sign. It's true. Uh, got Cabbage Hat versus Mar Marmite Ten. My wife saw this and said, two stinky boys." <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if they're boys, but it's it's true. Cabbage and Marmite are not known to smell great. <laughs> Maybe one of them will face fart explosion later on. Um, and that's going to be a double there too. Yeah, at the same. Uh, oh yeah, with Captain Drake and Tenmuku. That's true. That you know. Uh, that's like sort of three untested in Captain Drake, so it's really going to be interesting to see how those times uh, match up. And then we've got uh, Quartz versus Bohemico uh, just a couple hours after that, so got a big day yeah, tomorrow. A lot, of, a lot of new names here, too. It'll be exciting. Maybe we've got some uh, some real competitors here. Yeah, this um, is the second biggest mystery tournament uh, ever. Not as big as MTX, but uh, the biggest one that's, you know, under 300. Um, we have 30 more players than last year. A lot of people, a lot of matches. Yeah, so I'm excited to see if we've got some great new talent here, somebody who's going to surprise us, climb up through the ranks, and uh, maybe take on some of the big names that we're used to seeing um, so we get things shaken up for top eight. For sure. We had it happen last year. Uh, Okami of Games was known in uh, Kuso, but came and did amazing. And then Neat Cell... Uh, I don't know if they had really been in a lot of tournaments at all, but they made it into top eight. It was a big year. Andy wasn't in top eight. It was a it was a big shakeup year. We could have another one. 
Yeah, it's always fun to see things uh, surprise us because this is Mystery Tournament where we're all about being astounded by unexpected things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyways, uh, we will see you. Someone will probably be streaming those later, and if not, we'll probably catch them in vodcast. We've caught up with everything so far, and this is the densest time for matches, so we've been doing a pretty good job. We will, All right, well, uh, it was good commentating with you, ID. Uh, yeah, thanks for showing there. up. Come back anytime. Uh, I'll in between, keep that in mind, uh, and I'll Disney try that. Vacations. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody, and we'll see you here again on the Mystery Funhouse channel for more exciting mystery races. Goodbye.